Hey guys, it's Zung, and today we are gonna make two epic cheese boards, a cheap and an expensive one, both of which are gonna be super beautiful. Thank you to House for sponsoring this video. So because you guys know I love to shop at Trader Joe's, I went in with two budget prices in mind. The first one, I wanted to keep under $20, and with everything here, I came in just at $18. So we have some vegetables for a nice crunch. I have some fruit. I also have our meat, which is a salami, nice calabrese, which is my favorite. Something briny to snack on. Of course, our vehicle to carry the cheese and all the goodies on. And last but not least, our cheeses. So for the cheese, I really wanted to have a good variety. And when you're on a budget, you really wanna get something that packs in a lot of flavor and get the most bang for your buck. This goat cheese right here was $2.99 and I got the ones that already had um, herbs around it so you get a lot of flavor and also when you're choosing cheese, you wanna go for variety, a soft and a hard one. So for the hard one, you always wanna go for something that is universal, something that everyone will enjoy and everyone really loves cheddar. So I got this unexpected cheddar cheese, which we are gonna start building. First things first, I always like to put the largest item on the tray. Here I'm just using like this marble board. You can put it on a cutting board or even like a dinner plate for something this small. So I'm just gonna place the ramekin here so we can put our olives in so anything that requires like picking at so like olives dips i like putting it into a ramekin it just makes sense you know okay so pour the olives out and this is like the perfect size packet for something like this so now we lay out our cheese here I've cut my cheddar in two different ways, in slices, and I broke them up into small pieces like this so that it looks visually interesting on the board. I also have the goat cheese. I'm just gonna leave the goat cheese alone and we are gonna place it right here. I like putting the soft ones on the edge just because you're gonna need, people are gonna need a knife to grab it and it's just easier when it's not in the middle of the tray messing everything up. So on the edge is where I like it. So now I'm gonna lay down the sliced cheddar. And because it's pretty big like this, I can place it in multiple spots. A little bit right here. And then we also have some more right here. So I'll just sprinkle it around the goat cheese. You can really have fun just, or, or like even next to the sliced ones so that people know it's the same type of cheese. Just kind of broken up for you already. When you're making a small cheese board like this, really get creative with your space. If you want to um, use a larger board like that, really take advantage of it and like break things up, put it in different places. Remember, this is a palette, like a blank canvas. You're working with color and texture. If you wanted to get like the yellow cheese, that would be really good too. Um, but I just like the taste of this one because it has like a Parmesan-y taste to it that I really like. Now for the meat charcuterie. I like folding it up like this into like a flour and just lining it up. So I follow this account, Cheese by Numbers, and she likes to do like a meat river. And she kind of breaks down the mystery behind a cheese board that was really helpful to me. And I've just kind of adopted my own style of doing things. It draws your eye. That way it gives it a lot more volume, like height with this and people could just pick it off easily. This will be a short river. Last piece, I'll put a piece of cheese right here. See, and I've moved the cheese so it's supporting this and it already has such a beautiful shape. Now I really wanted to take a seasonal approach to this board so I'm gonna put my mini pumpkin right here. Also, also feel free to move things around as you're building it, it's not gonna look perfect once you lay it down like the first time. So just feel free to move things around and see what works for you. Okay, so we have our cheeses, our meats in. So now we are gonna add our fresh elements, which are the cucumbers and the raspberries. For the cucumbers, I've just quartered them and cut them in half. So you get like these nice spears. And it's really fun to just let them spill over 
that and just layer them so that they kind of have, like, like they look voluminous. Even though you only have like two varieties, it still looks very full. I think I need some green on this side. So I'm actually gonna move these over here and then place the cucumbers right there. Okay, now I'm gonna go back in and add more meat. And now I'm gonna fill in the gaps with some raspberries. A lot of bright fall colors. I know you guys are thinking there's a lot of gaps in here, but I am not done yet. I'm gonna use something else to really brighten and make this really beautiful. So if you wanted to, you could put your bread like over here. You could fill it up with the bread, but I kind of don't like to, just because I really want to maximize the space with as much cheese and as much toppings as I can. Accoutrements. Okay, so that looks beautiful. Now let me show you what I like to do to really beautify this tray. Okay, so I have some fresh herbs and flowers to really bring this tray alive. Because we are going for a fall theme here, I have some mums that I'm just gonna pick off the flowers. You eat with your eyes, so you wanna make it really visually appealing. And honestly, a cheese board generally looks beautiful anyways, but the more beautiful we can make it, the better. Um, and I just stick the flowers in random places where I think it needs kind of like filling in spaces, so like, Rosemary, which is really cheap. You can find bushes of rosemaries everywhere too, honestly, if you feel comfortable just picking it off. That, and then I love chamomile. They're just so dainty and beautiful. I'm actually growing my own edible garden with edible flowers and stuff upstairs. So yeah, just go and pick those off. Right here, just sticking out. Bright daisy, fill that hole and Voila! And I think that looks pretty good for our $18 cheese board. And honestly, if you guys were to order this from professionals, it was this would cost you at least, at least $50, if not more. So I wanted to show you guys what I did with the bread. I just sliced it into small slices like this and toasted it so it's like a nice cracker. You really get more bang for your buck here because I didn't even use the whole baguette. I used half of it and I got like so much Okay, so you can't have a cheese board without something delicious to sip on. So today we're gonna enjoy it with some house aperitifs. So we have the citrus flower and the peach passion fruit, which sounds delicious. Aperitifs and digestives are drinks typically alcoholic that are normally served before or after a meal. Because we usually enjoy a cheese board before a meal, it's a perfect time to serve this. You can serve this over ice or simply as a sipping drink with some kind of herb or a fruit or even a pretty flower in the glass to make it look beautiful. So I really like knowing that house aperitifs are very clean. I know exactly what goes into each bottle because it's in the back of the bottle. And it's just really fresh and complements the flavors of the cheese board. My favorite is the citrus flower. It's made with crisp lemon and elderflower. It's a California take on aperitifs. Nia and I don't really go out anymore because of the obvious, but we still enjoy date nights at home. So after the kids go to bed, I sometimes make a cheese board and we'll drink our house. He likes the bitter clove flavor, which has Amaro and is great for a whiskey lover, a little more manly, but I like the more fruity flavors like the citrus flower here, so it's perfect. The ordering process is really simple too, so if you guys are interested, the first 100 people to order the house essential kit using my code in the description box below will get $10 off and free shipping so you guys should definitely try this out okay so let's move on to our epic cheese board shall we so this is what hundred and twenty dollars gets you for a cheese board and trust me it is gonna be so big and beautiful that you can really serve up to like 30 people with this I feel like okay so I spent a little bit more on the cheese and at Trader Joe's I feel like their cheeses you get the most bang for your buck so I got a combination of hard soft and interesting I went with a camembert you can always get brie I feel like brie just lacks a flavor for me so camembert is a little more stinky and I love it um, this one is a new one a limited edition chimay how do you say that? You guys are gonna have to correct me. It's an autumn uh, washed rind cheese. 
Manchego here, which is like a classic one that you have to use for a cheese board. It just is kind of tangy and nutty and I love it. Um, Cotswold, it's like an herbed cheese, very reminiscent of cheddar for me, but it has chives and onions in there, so it's really flavorful. And if you guys noticed, I really like my cheese to be flavorful, so I found this Asiago cheese with rosemary and olive oil that I just thought would be perfect for a cheese board. And finally, something more mm, plain, a Gouda, a thousand day Gouda. All right, so. I was able to go to town with our accoutrements. I have some carrots here in multiple colors. I got snow peas, grapes. I got the tri-color ones because I thought it would add a lot of different colors here on the board. Strawberries, figs because it's that time of year. Cornichons, which for me is essential for any cheese board. Just that little crunch, that vinegary, briny crunch is just the best goes so well with our charcuterie for the charcuterie i was able to get a few different options i got this peppered salami along with this three pack with calabrese salami prosciutto and capicolo if i'm saying that right and this uh red chianti artisan salami we have some chocolates we have some liver mousse we have um dried fruits nuts more olives, and I'm really excited about this honey with a honeycomb in it. It was only $7, and I feel like it's like a two for one deal because honeycombs are so special and they're kind of expensive if you just get them alone. So, wait, I also have my crackers. We have some fig and olive crackers. These uh, whole grain wheat flour crackers. Um, they're Armenian cracker bread, but I love them because they're like crispy and there's sesame on them. It's just like full of flavor. And my favorite, pita bite crackers. The crackers though are gonna stay on the side because I don't want them to compete or get soggy with the elements we have here. With that in mind, let's go ahead and build our cheese board. All right, so first we are gonna lay down our ramekins. I'm just gonna throw them out randomly because we have a lot of space to work with. So now let's put down our cheeses. Brie takes up a lot of surface area, so I'm gonna lay it down right here. And then this one, because it's special and it has like a nice washed rind, I'm gonna put it on this side. And now for our hard cheeses, I'll place the Asiago one right here. And I feel like I'm gonna put it like this on its side so you can see the rosemary and the cheese slices. And then for the manchego, I sliced and then I arranged it so it looks visually interesting. These, they can just take it off by the slice. This way it's easier for your guests to grab a slice at a time and it's visually interesting. I have two more, our Gouda, which I believe I will just put right here. And then for the Cotswold, because it's a little more interesting of a cheese, I sliced it up, so I'm gonna do like a braided pattern, like French braids. And then the rest of the slices can just be distributed. Since this is a cheese board, the cheese should be the foundation in which we're building everything around. So now we're gonna go with our charcuterie again. I love using prosciutto because they're the easiest to fold. Pretty much I just peel off the slice and then I put it in a mound like this. And I like putting prosciutto next to something that it's complementary with. In this case, I'm gonna put it right here next to the camembert. These are a little thinner, but they're also pretty wide, so I can just put dollops of them like this. I don't have to do the flowers, because those actually take quite a bit of time. The Calabrese salami. This one, I'll do it into a flower. And I know I showed you the flowers, but you really could just line them up. Then we have our mousse liver pate, and it came in a container already, so I'm just gonna go with it. I got a big pomegranate, which I'm gonna use as decor, but you can also eat it. I'm going for a very autumn vibe, so I want it to look very fresh, yet still cozy. Okay, so now we're gonna put down our produce and our fresh stuff. Veggies first. I'm gonna grab a handful of my vegetables in various places. Like wherever you feel like it needs a little bit of green. We have our dried fruit, which I think will be really pretty lined up 
I'm also going to add one right on top of the camembert for visual interest. That green can stay. Don't neglect the corners. We always want to fill that up. Some chocolates. Just break it up. Add it right here. It's like a nice little surprise with the chocolate. And then we have some nuts. These are my favorite everything bagel seasoning nuts. They're just so yummy. I'm just going to sprinkle them. And then some dried fruits. We have the classic apricots. Dried cherries. I'm going to add a few more slices of meat. This is our stick of salami. For grapes, always cut them in smaller bunches like this so people can grab them. Time to fill the bowls. Let me see visually. I think the green should go here. So we'll put our cornichons. The olives can go into this bowl. And then the honey. I'm going to put the honeycomb in first. So pretty. It looks pretty epic, right? It's beautiful, it's colorful, but we're not done yet because I like adding a little bit of extra oomph to it. I have some cut roses from the garden that I think would be so beautiful, so beautiful. It's the perfect shade of pink. And we're gonna just place them strategically where we need to fill in the gaps. Right here, I think it would be so beautiful next to chocolate and it adds like just a pretty pink pop. Then, we're not done yet, we still have some chamomile. We also have lavender, which I think would be so nice as a border. I also have olive leaves. Whenever you're putting like flowers or anything, make sure that they're edible, like marigolds, pansies, roses, chamomile, just anything that you are familiar with that you know would go with food is what I recommend. Like herbs are also really fun, like rosemary to use and to decorate. Mm. We have our crackers beautifully displayed here and this, you guys, is our epic, expensive $120 cheese board, which to be honest is on the cheaper side because if you guys ever ordered something like this, I feel like it would run you at least $300. But I also didn't use all of the raw materials. I have enough stuff to make another board or keep as snacks for the kids for the rest of the week. So really you're not using the full $18 or the full $120 because you have a lot of materials left over. Building a good cheese board is typically a good skill to have during this time of year. I don't know about this year, but it's fun to do anyways as a creative art project. This is beautiful and I'm about to dig in. If you guys are interested in checking out House Essential Kit, be sure to check out the link in the description box below for $10 off and free shipping. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to crush that like button if you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.